So uh, this is just a, an, another image of a little boy with the sum in his mouth and the blanket, you know, and just waiting for those moments and communicating to mom about, you know, what's going on in her child's life is so important. But this is just an order form. And I told you guys yesterday that I do handwrite my order forms. I still feel pretty strongly about that, that it's, uh, you know, even though we have all the high tech ability, it's kind of just a nice little sit down and, you know, personal communication with them to, to handwrite their order. So, and that's just for me personally, that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Um, when you're thinking about your sale, there's only a few ways that you can make more money in your business. You can lower the cost of sales that you, for your product, which most of our cost of sales are fairly fixed. So that's a, that's a tough one. You can sell more often to every client so you can find ways to get them in your business more often so that you can sell to them more often or you can sell more to each client that comes in, raising your averages, raising your prices. So those two things kind of tie together, but you know, there, we've got to always come up with ways to grow our profit margin. And there, there aren't a lot of ways to do that. You know, we can add a new product line and raise our prices. We can do a few other things, but that's one of the things with adding this event system for us. And when we knew that when we booked this, it's going to be a $10,000 day. It's something that, you know, you book this once a month or however often you want to do it. And, putting the system in place, it's almost this guaranteed revenue. And I'm gonna show you, um, like I told you yesterday, I'm gonna show you kind of the evolution of pricing and how it happened. So you'll be able to see how it started in the beginning and it worked in the beginning. We had great averages. And it, so if that looks like something that's of more interest to you than going all out like I do, um, you know, that's okay too. You can do this however it's gonna work for you. Show to sell, we all hear that all the time, but I work with photographers that will tell me, you know, such and such, or these people are always calling and asking for this, or I hate to do this, and I keep getting requests for it. And then I go to their website, and they're showing that stuff. <laughs> and so if you don't want to do it, don't show it. If you wanna do it, show it. And same thing for me, there's nothing that's hanging in my studio now that's not a grouping. It's going to be, they're shown just like this. They're shown in groupings so that, you know, used to back in the day, the big thing was to sell the wall portrait. And that was, you know, everybody's goal. When you went to hear speakers speak, it was sell the wall portrait. And it was a goal of mine for a really long time. I wanted to sell that 30 by 40. You have to have the 40 by 60 on your menu to be able to sell the 30 by 40. And so we all did that. And that was this thing, well, now I would much rather sell a grouping of Im images than one large piece. And not that the large pieces don't ever get sold, they do, but when we can do a grouping, it's a lot easier to talk to the mom about, you know, as your family does grow and change, you'll be able to move these pieces and set them single, you know, uh, show them separately, or you can add to the gallery. So it's a way to, you know, really kind of come across and, and get rid of those objections a lot of times. So, um, so show what you want to sell. Plan and prepare, and we've been talking about that for two days now, <laughs> but that is key. That is key to your final sale, is to really plan and work with the client and prepare them for the sale. We're gonna do that through the first phone call, through the consultation call, through the session, through the design appointment call if you're doing a order after your session, not at the session, and then at the order appointment. So how that looks is right from the first phone call, I told you guys that we start asking them right away on the first phone call, you know, where are you gonna hang your portraits? And that's something that no matter what kind of session we do for the events, it's gonna come from the host mom. She's gonna be calling her friends, talking about the events, and asking them, you know, where are you gonna hang your portraits? This is what Lori specializes in. So we're gonna coach them to walk through that. If a client is calling the studio for the first time, same thing. You know, she's gonna call and say, can you tell me how much your prices are? Can you tell me how much your packages are? How much is your eight by 10? That's typically the phone call that's gonna come unless they've come as a result of a referral or a display. So when that phone call comes, we're gonna communicate back to them. We're gonna send you all of our prices, send you over our product menu. How did you hear about us? We're gonna start the conversation. And then after that conversation gets started, we're gonna talk about what we specialize in. 
And that's going to usually come when a, a mom is, is going to answer the question. When we ask them, we're going to ask, have you thought about where you're going to hang your portraits? And she's going to say, oh, you know, I, I really was thinking about an 8x10 or, you know, a 5x7. She's going to say, no, no, I really haven't thought about that. The answer is always no. They have not thought about it. All they have thought about is, my Lucy's turning four. It's time to get her photo taken. You know, I'm having a new baby. It's time to get pictures. Whatever the case is, they have not thought about where they're going to hang their portraits. So it's, that's our job to communicate to them that, that is, that's what we do. And so when, they, um, when we ask, have you thought about where you're going to hang your portraits? And they say, well, no, I really haven't thought about that. I'm going to answer, well, what we specialize in is custom design wall concepts. And so I'm going to be asking you to take some images of your home and really just walk around at any place you would consider hanging a portrait. I want to, I want to see that space. And as you do that, I'll be able to make suggestions to you for clothing, for personal props that you might want to include. And we'll be really able to customize your session based on your decor and your lifestyle. And so now I've completely changed the conversation away from how much is your 8 by 10 you know, and we're getting them into the mindset of really what we want to do. So that's going to happen right there in that first phone call. We're going to, I always do a consultation call, whether it's a regular studio appointment or an event. And you, know, you kind of saw that process here, but the consultation call for the events is just going to be calling them. Hopefully I have their images already. If I don't, I'm going to be asking them to take their images while I'm on the phone. And that's kind of ballsy, <laughs> but it's, it's something that I've found that it, it works. And if I don't have those images, if I don't have the images of the wall, then the sale goes down. So they really have to get invested in and start planning and preparing along with me. And so if I call them for the consultation call and I don't have the images yet, I'm just going to tell them, you know, hi, this is Lori. We're scheduled for you to come to uh, Lisa's portrait event on such and such a date and um, I haven't gotten your images from your wall yet and I, I really need those so that I can talk to you about your clothing and and things that I'm going to ask you to bring so why don't you go ahead and do that right now I'll wait and I'll, I'll wait while she does it on the phone I give everybody my cell phone they can text them to me and that's the easiest thing for them to do and so they'll they'll actually do it when I started doing that it changed dramatically because I used to ask them to email me their, their images because that's easier for me if I'm emailing them, they're right on my computer. But what made it easier for the client was to just text them to my phone. And everybody's taking pictures with their cell phones or iPads, you know, all this these days. And so they can do that very easily. So during the consultation call, during the session, I'm going to continue that conversation. I'm going to talk to her about, you know, oh, this is going to be so cute in her room that, you know, the place that we've planned this for is going to be, this is going to look amazing. So I'm going to continue telling her this is, this is the right decision. You've made a good choice. And we didn't do that today. You didn't see that because we didn't do a whole planning session with Lisa, but she did give me three different areas to design. And, you know, if that was a typical regular session, I would be telling her while we were photographing, this is going to be amazing little series for your living room. And if you remember, hers was the house with the two blue chairs and the brown kind of credenza thing with the rocks on it. So we did the blue and brown grouping there. Um, we're going to continue it. If, if it's a regular studio session and they're coming back to the studio a week later, then we have that design appointment call. And that's just going to be a couple days before they come in for their order appointment. Whoever is doing the sale is going to call and they're going to say, you know, hey, this is Kim from Lori Nordstrom Studio and we've got you scheduled to come in on Thursday at 5. So I just wanted to call and let you know that I'm so excited for you to see your images. They're amazing. And this is part of our script, whether Kim has seen the images or not. <laughs> and she, she knows that they're going to love them and so she's, she can say that. And even if you're making your own calls, same thing. You're going to love your images. I'm so excited for you to see them. You want to build that excitement. You want to build that with words and not with those sneak peeks. <laughs> um, let them know. We're so excited for you to come in and see these images. And, you know, I, I'm going to be sending you over uh, a, do a design that I've put together for your living room that we talked about. And take a look at that. Let me know what you think. If we need to change any colors up, we can do that. And so we're going to get them those images of the blank frames, the frames with nothing in them, 
hanging on their walls. So they're already pre-planning and pre-buying before they ever come and sit down on my couch. So that's the only thing that doesn't happen in an event because we're doing the, the session or the sale immediately following the session. But everything else happens in the exact same way as we do it in the studio. And then again, during the order appointment, you're going to continue to make sure that they know that they're making great decisions. You can't wait to, wait to see this all done and on their wall. So it's solidifying the process the whole entire way. Pre-session consultation, that's what I just went over, so I'm not gonna stay there. All right, the next way to boost your sale is with a product-based menu. And this is something that years ago, I realized that, you know, I am never going to buy something from a list of words and numbers. None of us would ever make a purchase that way. When we purchase online, we're clicking on images, we're seeing them 3D, sometimes we can even watch a little video of them, or we're buying in a catalog, or we're going and having a touchy-feely experience and actually being able to try things out or try things on. We would never ever just look at a word and or a description and a price. And so why would we, as with such a visual product, have a price list? It doesn't make any sense. And so in about 2001, <coughs> I came up with a, a menu. And at the time, it was one of the old ate up folios. Do you guys remember those? None of you were even shooting then, I, I don't think. But maybe you had it for high school pictures or something. <laughs> but uh, they were the eight up fol folders that, that folded out and you had eight pictures that slid into to different mats. Well, I ripped all the mats off of this thing and printed a menu so that when clients came into the studio, I would open up this menu and we'd had pictures of product. And that was my first product menu. But from that time, <laughs> I changed the language in the studio so that when someone asked to see our prices, we said, absolutely, we'd be happy to show you our product menu. And so taking the focus off the price and putting it on the product makes a huge difference to the way people perceive the products that you're offering. And so that's, you know, even today with the, with the children's, the, the portrait event menu, we've got, it's very product oriented. So when we're showing, we're showing images, we're showing product. They're not just seeing a list of words and numbers. We've got canvas groupings. They're seeing the way the canvas grouping is going to look. They're seeing framed groupings, the way they're going to look in the home. So we're you know, pre-selling these, these things based on product and not on price. So that's one way, even right away, to raise your prices. And something that makes it, it makes it so different when you're presenting your pricing in a different way that your clients can't compare when you raise your, pri when you raise your prices. And so that's the first thing that I would suggest. If you know it's time to raise your prices, change the way you present the prices. And then when your client, if it's someone that's, that you've worked with before, if they're calling and they say, you know, hi, I, I want to schedule a session with you again, the, the typical response for us is to go, oh, I'm going to raise my prices. She's going to be so mad. You know, how do, I, how do I do this? Do I tell her now? Do I tell her later? You know, instead, book the session just like you normally would. And then let her know, you know, hey, I've got some great new products you're going to be so excited about. I'm going to email you over a PDF of our product menu. Just take a look at it all and let me know if you have any questions. That way you've presented her the pricing in a very positive way. You've made it completely different so she can't compare. And nine out of ten of those people are never even going to, they're not going to blink. The one that does, make a plan. You know, make a plan. And, and we talked about that uh, the first day where my plan when I did this, when I decided I got to change my life, I got to change what I'm doing, I got to raise my prices or I can't do this, I planned for a friends and family day twice a year. I did one in the spring and one in the fall. So I planned like a March date and an October date so that in my mind, when somebody called and they freaked out about my new prices, I could say, you know what, I understand, I totally understand, I get it. Um, we do have two friends and family days on the calendar I'd be happy to, to plug you into. We've got March 17th and October 7th, which would be better. And typically those people are not going to take you up on it. They're going to say, never mind, no thank you, or they're going to deal with the new prices one way or the other. And it's okay. You know, if you have a $1,000 average and you're photographing 100 families, and with a $1,000 average. If you all of a sudden can take your averages to 1,500, 
You can photograph 75 people and still make the same amount of money. You can afford to lose 25% of the people. So, you know, don't get too worked up over, I'm going to lose people, I'm going to lose people. The people that you're going to lose should be lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and that is part of the deal. But if you put that plan in place, and, and what happened for me, and I've seen this happen many times for photographers, I have worked with people that have had to set up a friends and family day once a month. Um, because they were shooting so much because they were so cheap and so to transition they set up a friends and family day one Saturday a month where people could come they kind of had the old prices but they were shooting almost like a portrait event they were doing many sessions in a day and so it was working out average wise um, but for me it was that, that twice a year and for most people what happens is we need to have that yes answer in our minds but really it just doesn't happen. You present them with something different, they can't compare it, you're excited about new product, and if you don't even add one product to your product line, but you present it in a different way and you're excited about it, that's how they're gonna perceive it. This is new, this is exciting, we've got new stuff to look at. And they are, they're gonna have new images, new images of products. So um, again, just present something new and different. So a product-based menu can really change the perception of what you have to offer. Did you have a question, Kristen? Do you include session fees in the product menu, or is I it just product? I don't have session fees in there, and session fees are something that I don't mind telling people just right away when they call. Do you I, have a standard, like, just I do. One $185 is our session fee. I add a minimum of $100 if I go on location. It's typically $100 if it's in the area, mm -hmm. but I say starting at. And then our, our seniors are different. Our senior sessions start at $185 and they go up from there with the time with that's included. Okay. <coughs> you're you're going to go over like what you add on, right? Are you going to go over those specifically? I'm just very curious about like, um, you know, just how you're basically building on to those prices. To the session fee? Yeah. In the session fee, nothing is included. Mm -hmm. um, it's just time. Only in that $2,500 senior session do I have product included. And everything else, it's a session fee only. So it's session fee, and then you you just add whatever they want to add, yep. and you have them Everything all. Everything else is a la carte, basically, mm -hmm. except for the packages that I'll be showing you for the events. Okay. Yep. All right. Making suggestions. I've been drilling this in for three days. <laughs> um, again, one thing that you can do differently tomorrow and raise your averages is to just make suggestions. And start with one, you know, if it's not an easy thing for you, not a natural thing to make a suggestion, just try it. Try suggesting one thing and you will be surprised at how many people will just, that's what they're supposed to do because that's what you just told them they were supposed to do. You know, and you always want it to be based on them. I, that's one of the reasons why I want those images of the home is because I want to make very personal, customized suggestions that are for them. I'm not going to tell everybody this is right for you. You know, not, that doesn't work for every person. They're, it's all going to be customized based on their decor, lifestyle, who they are, their personalities, all those, all those good things. And then adding a bonus schedule is something that raised our averages is another thing that it raised our averages overnight. And I was at a, a point in time when we started the bonus schedule, I was at a point in time where I didn't really feel like I could raise my prices again. I was the most expensive person in the area, and, and my prices are not overly expensive when you look at in, industry-wide at top producing studios. However, in my area, in the Midwest, where I am, I'm expensive. And so I wasn't at that place where I could you know, raise the prices, I didn't feel like. However, I knew that I needed to make more money on every session. It just, I had to. And so we came up with a bonus schedule and it was one of the things I sat down with my team at the time and I said, you know, what do you think, what, where are people at the end of the sales appointment? At the time we were giving a gift with purchase. So you spend a thousand dollars, you get this. You spend 1500, you get that. You spend 2000, you get this. And one of the girls said to me, you know, we plan with our clients so well before they get there that they're not really getting to the end and going, oh, if I just spend another hundred dollars, I can get this free gift. That's just not the mindset of the people that we're working with. And, and so we started talking about it and we came up with the bonus schedule. And what the bonus schedule is, is for every you know, level of spending that you get to, 
you're going to get to add product at a discount. And the more you spend, the more discount you get. And I'll show you, show you a bonus schedule in a little bit. The other thing that we did with it was we added four by sixes. Every single image that leaves my studio is mounted, textured, luster coated. Every single image. It doesn't matter if it's a four by five for a desktop frame or a 30 by 40. And because of that, I was saying no to four by sixes a lot. When the mom would ask me, you know, can I get, just get four by sixes for my scrapbook? Well, we just do custom prints. Well, that's not my mojo. I want to say yes to everything, but it does have to be right for my business. So I, with the bonus schedule, was able to add on four by sixes and have that yes answer for mom. Absolutely, let me show you how you can get them. And so with the bonus schedule, once they spend a certain amount of money, they can then add a four by six of any image that's ordered, which means the work has already been done on it. I'm happy to push go again and send it to ACI. And so any image that's ordered, you can order a four by six and they start at just $20, which is super cheap for me. Um, they're unmounted. We do call them proofs because it's different than our, our custom prints in the studio. Um, this, this is how normally our prints look. They're mounted on map board. They're textured, they're luster coated. Um, we showed the images from the image box yesterday. And I know a lot of people were talking about that. And same thing. Oh, I forgot about these. I'll have to show those in a little bit. Um, but the prints that are in here, you know, they feel good. They feel like you've made an investment. It's not a box of proofs. So they're mounted, they're textured, they're luster coated, they're protected, um, and they, they feel very nice. So adding four by sixes was something that it was a very deliberate choice for me. I wanted to be able to say yes to the client, but I didn't want to just have unmounted four by sixes on my menu. And so now, once they spend a certain amount of money, they can order any image they order, starting at $20, and it goes all the way to once they spend $2,500, they're going to get a free four by six of every image that they've ordered. And so, and again, you know, it's 68 cents or whatever it is, you know, from the lab and just push and go again, the work has already been done. So little things that you can add on that have a great value to the client but don't cost you a lot are a great way to add on to the sale. Are those four by sixes, they're not mounted but they are lustered and textured or just lux, lu the fr they're, luster paper? They're are, they literally are printed like proofs. So okay. they're just prints. I want okay. them to be different okay. and I know and you know that if we don't provide people with things, they're going to photograph them, they're going yes. to scan them, I'm over that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm giving them all their digital files that are web-sized, yes. so I'm not worried about them scanning. Mm -hmm. And you know, back in the day, that was the argument, well, we need to texture our four by sixes because they're gonna scan them. They're okay. gonna do it anyway. But you do use a professional luster, the, the professional luster paper when you're ordering. Correct, you yes. Use the professional luster, just don't bother texturing, don't bother mounting. Right. Yep. Brilliant. Thank you. So starting at $20, and what happened when we did that, I started it because we had so many, especially seniors, who wanted those four by sixes for scrapbooks and bulletin boards and boyfriends and, you know, and all these things and wanted something more than a wallet to be able to give them. And I was saying no to money. And as soon as we did that, now you get to, you're at this level, you can get your four by sixes for 20 bucks, or you can get them for 16, or you can get them for 12. We've got four levels, or you get them free. And we'd get to these levels and they were adding on $20, $20, $20, just because, you know, oh, I want this one for this person, this, and anything they've ordered, any pose they've ordered, they can have them. And, you know, so I was adding on overnight two, $300 onto a sale just in four by sixes, mm -hmm. which was crazy to me. I was giving that up before. So now we've got a bonus schedule on every single product line that we do. And the bonus schedule is for, we've got a select product list of things that I don't want to put in my regular menu. And they are things like the CD slideshow, they're the accordion, accordion albums, even uh, small tabletop frames are on there. And you'll see the list in, the, in a minute, but we've got a list of items that they can get at the end of the sale at a discount once they've spent a certain amount of money. So does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Can, so you charge $20 for one 4x6 luster coated. Wow. Only once they've spent a thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. 
and it's and at that point even it's twenty dollars. <laughs> my four by sixes are three ninety nine. So clearly How I need three ninety nine for okay, four. Okay, I'm gonna hit you over the head. Yeah, <laughs> please do because um, and I'm gonna I'm, we'll go we'll get to this, but. Um, you are not charging now for sure. <laughs> you are not allowed to leave the building yeah. with charging three ninety nine for a four by six. <laughs> I'm gonna change it on break. No <laughs> lie. Good. I will. Well, and you know, and it's and we'll get to this, like I said, but it's normal mentality to say, Well, I paid this much for the lab. If I double it or if I triple mm -hmm. it, I'm making money. Mm -hmm. You're not making money. Yeah. Your kids will not eat at those prices. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hope your husband has a great job. He does. God bless him. Um, but Addie, that. can I just say something about that? Yeah. Because we were talking about that yesterday and I said, because we keep thinking about the end product, the clients think about the end product because they think, oh, $3.99, yeah, I, I can go get Walmart and get 96 cents for a four by six. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, well, like my bookkeeper and my accountant don't just charge me. Oh, here's your piece of paper for your uh, your end of year thing. I'm paying her for all that time she put in and all that stuff. And and, and the knowledge book, and, and the accountant and charges more than the bookkeeper because <laughs> they've had more schooling and all the different things. So I've got to get that in my mind and in my client's mind that they are not being pay, buying a four by six piece of paper. They are buying all of the hours, all of the education all of that stuff to get to that product. And I will tell you, not on the bonus schedule, a four by six is $88. <laughs> and, that, and that is mounted, textured, lesser coated, you know, like everything else, it's a custom print. And so, and nobody buys those, but that's what gets it that value at the mm -hmm. end. Any image that you've ordered, you can now have it in a four by six for just $20, you know? Um, but up, up to five, up by, up to five by seven is eighty-eight. I'm papers. <laughs> 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 Ernie, you're a rock star. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a little pricing powwow over lunch, people. <laughs> All right. So, um, anybody excited about starting a bonus schedule? Yes. Very. <laughs> Miley, you're like sitting there looking at me like. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Yeah, Pacto, let's do it. Yes. Yes. Pacto Hico. Yes, How about the internet has questions? Do we have, do we have any questions to answer right now? Oh, thanks, Kristen. <laughs> uh, well, we do have about eight minutes before break, so what do you want to do? Is this I a would love to answer a couple questions. That's okay, great. fantastic. Thank you. So a question from, let's see. A question from D Photo again to clarify. So you have no print minimum? I do not have a print minimum. And that's a really good question and I get that asked every single time. And that, that's another thing that's a personal thing for me. I, in my mind, if someone gave me a minimum, that would give me something to get to. And I don't ever want to put that ceiling in someone's mind. If you're having trouble with people getting to a certain level and you feel like I need to have a minimum, do something that's like a session fee with product credit. So if I was going to charge $185 and I wanted to have a $500 minimum, then I would say your session fee is $500, you've got $300 in, in product credit with that. So it's a credit going to something bigger instead of a minimum that I've got to get to. You have to spend at least this much makes me feel like that's a number I got to reach. Is, is, that, is that the same thing as, like I say, okay, my, my session fee is 200 and products, packages start at 300 is what I say. Now yeah, is that that's okay. the same kind of, is that okay that works the yep. other way instead of, is that a product minimum though? That's I don't a, know. That's I'm not using the word minimum, well, right? Just they, packages start at 300. If they have, do they have to buy at least a package? Well, I, I think I'm just assuming that by the time, the way I'm wording it, oh, okay, we have your session CS200 and your packages start at 300. Start at, I'm assuming they're not going to come and work that hard and then they know in their minds, okay, I'm spending a minimum of 500. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming they, they understand <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, I've never had a product minimum and, and, you know, also you have to remember, Working with the client from start to finish, when you're starting on the first phone call with, here's what we specialize in, here's what we do, and you're working with them and working through that process, there's no way in, their, in anyone's right mind they could ever come in thinking, by the time I'm done with them, <laughs> that they could just buy a couple 8x10s and 5x7s. You know? <laughs> it's just not part of the deal. That's not what we do. And so, um, so it, do, it, it works for me not to have one. And again, my mentality is that that minimum kind of is a ceiling instead of 
Let's go beyond that. Tina J. Max Photography. Loving your workshop, thank you so much. Question on pricing, I come from a sales and marketing background and like in any business, getting new customers is so much more expensive than repeat clients. So I give repeats a small discount or bonus for coming back. Do you think that's a bad practice? I don't think that's a bad practice as long as, as you're raising prices, you're still raising prices with those people even if they get a discount. Another thing that I've seen people do, and I haven't incorporated this, although we do it a little bit with the birthday club, but give people a lifetime membership so that they don't even pay a session fee. And that's a great way to reward your past clients is to say, once you buy into this, you've got sessions for life. And it's a, it's a really great way to reward well spending clients. You know, you want to make sure they keep coming back to you. So you're a VIP. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Saddles and Tack would like to know, at what point is the price list sent to a client? So for example, if a client calls out of the blue, no referrals, do you talk price on the package philosophy on that first call and then immediately send out the um, price list? We always send it after the first phone call, but that's after I've built a relationship and started that communication process on this is what we do. You always want to build value before sending the price. So I, I want to answer them with a yes when they call and say, you know, hi, I was wondering if I could get your pricing, your price list. Absolutely, we'd be happy to send you our product menu is my answer. And then I want to find out, how'd you hear about us? Who are we going to be photographing? And start that communication process, building the relationship, building the value of what we do. And then absolutely, once we schedule that session, even if they choose not to schedule with me at that time, I'll send them the product menu. Totally fine with me. I want them to be presented with the pricing before they come in. But again, the product menu is, is it's like a byproduct of really what we're communicating. We're communicating what we specialize in is custom wall decor. We're getting them excited about walking around their house and photographing spots that we, they might consider hanging a portrait. And I'm telling them I'm going to be working with them to custom design something for them. And so it becomes a different process. So when they get that product menu, not the price list, but the product menu, then it's just something that they're you know, going through enjoying instead of analyzing a price list. Great. Right. We have so many questions, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> to pick out the, the most relevant. OK, so a question from Lori Pina. <laughs> Thank you, Lori, for all of your great questions. <laughs> who says, I've had clients recently who are in transition and getting ready to move, so they don't know their wall spaces. Some have invested in wall art anyway because they knew they wanted those images big, but how do you handle the objection of, we don't know what our walls are going to look like? Well, one of the things that we've done with, if it's, if it's like a color issue, that kind of thing, we recommend canvas gallery wraps because then you're, you can go into any home. This canvas wrap that I have around the corner, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, it's, got a, it's got a blue background, but typically canvas wraps are just going to be the, the whole image wrapped around the print, and so you're not worried about matching a frame with the decor style, and we do a lot of canvas wraps. Um, I always suggest for people to make their canvas wraps the same price as having a framed print, and that way you're just selling a finished option. This is ready to hang, and so whether it's, you know, Walter Bay frames or canvas gallery wraps or even traditional framing, just get a ballpark price that your cost of sale is built into each one and sell it all the same. That way you're selling that finished option for them. But canvas wraps I would definitely suggest. The other thing is too, if they're building, you know, they probably have a design blueprint, what do you call that? You know? Blueprint. Yeah, the blueprint. <laughs> Floor plan, thank you. <laughs> Floor plan that, you know, it's going to show the window space. It's going to show where a fireplace is. It's going to show, you know, those kind of things. And so you can even go, take it a step further and act as a designer in that way to say, you know, if you want to share your blueprints with me or if, I, if you want me to meet with your designer or your builder, I'd be happy to go over things with them so that we can make the, the right choices for your new home. Um, so, on so Ogonzilla wants to know: Did Lori <laughs> did Lori raise your prices gradually, or did you pick your target market range and build from there? I did not raise them gradually, but it was because I was in a crash and burn place, 
And I did raise my prices over a night and it was one of those things, it, it's not necessarily what I recommend, <laughs> but it was one of those things that it was for me, I don't care if anybody ever comes again because I don't like anybody. <laughs> and I was in that mode of if I had a bad day or had a bad client, I was raising my prices. And so, um, <laughs> and, it's, and it's one of the reasons for a long time, all I had was a PDF of my price list. I've done that for years and years, nothing's been printed. And now we do finally have just one menu in the studio and I have one menu when I go to events. But for years, everything was just a PDF and it was because if I wanted to change my prices tomorrow, I was going to. And our, my menus have always been seasonally dated. So it'll say winter 2012. And it makes it an, very easy to change and update when you're just doing it digitally. So, um, you know, for someone who knows they need to raise their prices, gradually is, I mean, th there's a big variable there. Because while you don't want to shock your client, it's also, it's hard to do it in, in baby steps because you're, you need to be profitable. And pricing for profit is one of those things that's, and we'll, we'll go through a model here so that I can kind of show you just the, the lowest base pricing is cost-based pricing. And then you go up from there based on your experience and the market demand and, and those kind of things. But cost-based pricing is the bare minimum that we should work for. And, and I'll show you guys that. But um, when, you're, when you're at that point and you're charging 395 for a four by six, and we've got to make some changes. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> uh, we've got to make some changes with that. It can't happen gradually. And so what I would suggest to Kristen, working with her, is that you know, we put some, some parameters in place so that, yes, this is my new pricing, but when somebody flips out or I you know, feel like I'm going to lose somebody, I can plug them into a portrait event or I can plug them into a special event. I can plug them into a friends and family day, whatever that might be. So, and like I said, for somebody that really, really needs to make that jump, that might happen once a month in the beginning where you can plug those old clients back into something but typically, the way we all start in this business is photographing our friends and photographing our family and photographing people who will take advantage and walk all over us and tell their best friend, <laughs> tell their best friend, hey, if you call and tell her I sent you, she'll do it for free. Right. You know, <laughs> we all have been there. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, I've been there too. And so when you have, when that's your pocket of clientele, then it's time to just say, okay, here is what my business is now going to look like. These people are not my target client. Yes, they're still my friends. I'll plug them into family, Friends and Family Day if I have to. But um, you know, one of the reasons my second shooter is so happy to be with me and have the prices that I'm doing is because she has to say no to those people. You know, she, she can't let them walk all over her anymore because now she can't photograph outside of the studio. Um, only a media family. And so it's, and it's a blessing to be able to have that to say no. And so, you know, if you don't have the, you know, the cojones to say, um, you know, this is my, my business model, this is what I've got to do to feed my family, then put those little parameters in place that you can work with those people as you need to, and they'll start falling off, you know, and as you get busier and busier with the right clients, you're going to let them fall off. <laughs> do you have your second on a non-compete? She, I mean, yeah, sort of. I mean, you can't really, uh, non-compete doesn't really hold because you can't take away someone's work, uh, right to work. Right. However, you know, I can have her um, not take sessions outside of the studio mm -hmm. for money. Um, I can have her not uh, ever contact any of our studio clients, outside even the, the ones studio. that she's photographed. Those right. things are studio property that, mm -hmm. that, yes, that she can't do.